Hello everyone. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about mechanism of action and antimicrobial activity of erythromycin. So first of all, we need to read this text over here and then we will move towards the diagram. So uh, antibacterial uh, action of erythromycin and other macrolide may be inhibitory or bactericidal. So depending upon the concentration, uh, mechanism of action can be inhibitory or can be bactericidal. That means it is going to um, kill the bacteria. For susceptible organs, now, obviously, if organism is resistant, it is not going to have any effect on it. Um, so activities enhanced at alkaline pH. Inhibition of protein synthesis occur via binding to the 50S ribosomal RNA. As we know, there are two parts of uh, ribosomal RNA. One is 50S. And the one, uh, 50S, uh, only 50S, there is a binding site to which this drug um uh, binds and over there it stop or inhibit the protein synthesis as we know protein synthesis is very important for the viral functioning of a cell as we know there are many structures which are made up of proteins and we have to send signals to other part of cell uh, through protein and there are several uh, important enzymes for the functioning of cell which are proteinous in nature so all of those things uh, will be compromised because of the inhibition of protein synthesis by this drug. So um, binding site is near peptidyl transferase center. There is a center called as peptidyl transferase center where there is transfer of peptidyl chain, peptidyl chain to, into a, a new amino acid so that it can be elongated. And there, thus there could be a formation of a peptidyl chain. So it is actually going to halt that process of peptide change elongation. So it is going to bind at uh, near that center. And over there, it will inhibit or block uh, the peptide chain elongation. And that process is called as transpeptidation. So that process will be halted um, by blocking the polypeptide exit tunnel. As we know, after the formation of peptide chains, um, th those peptide chains have to exit through exit tunnels. As a result, peptidyl tRNA is dissociated from the ribosome. So when uh, there is no more exit present for the formed uh, polypeptide, now they are uh, at their position and they can't move. So what will happen that uh, that peptidyl tRNA will be ultimately dissociated from the ribosome because it cannot work any longer. So it will be dissociated from the ribosome and then it will uh, no longer be forming any protein or peptide, peptide chain. So erythromycin can also inhibit the formation of TS ribosomal subunit. Not only that it is uh, causing the blockage of peptide chain elongation, it can also inhibit the formation of the primary uh, unit uh, for the protein synthesis, that is 50S ribosomal subunit. So when there is uh, there is no more formation of 50S ribosomal subunit, all of that assembly is not going to be happening. So ultimately, there will be no more uh, protein synthesis. So now uh, we should move towards the diagram so that we could understand it better. So over here, we have the diagram that we have already discussed in tetracycline uh, video. Now, again, we are here. So as we know, there are uh, different tRNA uh, having amino acid with them. Those tRNA are called as charged tRNA. And first step is that charged tRNA uh, attached to the mRNA at position A and then uh, at position P, we have another tRNA, which is having uh, many uh, amino acids attached to it. And the second step is that this tRNA having so many amino acids with it has to transfer or has to make a peptidyl bond with the new amino acid, which is present at this position. So this process, is happening in the step two and is, it is called as transpeptidation. This process is being halted by macrolide and uh, there will be no more formation of the uh, 
uh, peptide bond. And secondly, it also uh, block or inhibit the formation of 50S ribosomal subunit so that this all assembly could be uh, inhibited. So it is active against susceptible strains of gram positive organisms, especially pneumococci, streptococci, staphylococci, and gone bacteria, and mycoplasma pneumonia, L pneumophila, and chlamydia trachomatis, chlamydophila uh, sitaki. Chlamydophila pneumoniae, H. pylori, Listeria, monocytogenes, and certain mycobacteria. Mycobacterium cancelsi, mycobacterium trophilaceum are also susceptible. Gram negative organisms, including Neisseria species, Bortitila, Bortitila uh, produces Bortitila hansila, Bortitila quintana, as well as some Rickettsia species. Treponema pallidum and Campylobacter species are susceptible. Haemophilus uh, influenza is somewhat less susceptible. So these are all the organisms which are having susceptibility towards uh, erythromycin. So now let's talk about the resistance which is developed against erythromycin um, through various mechanisms. So first of all, a rest uh, a resistance against erythromycin is plasmid encoded. There are three ways through which resistance can occur. Reduce permeability of the cell membrane or active influx. So when there is a reduced permeability of the cell membrane, now uh, erythromycin cannot enter into the cell. Obviously, if there is no entrance of the erythromycin into the cell, ultimately there will be no more effect of it. Or there could be the presence of active flux. So active flux actually throw uh, erythromycin out of the cell by the use of ATP. So now actively uh, cell is throwing out erythromycin and now no more erythromycin can stay in the cell to perform its function. Secondly, production of aspherases that uh, hydrolyze macrolides. So there are certain enzymes which hydrolyze macrolides which are being produced by uh, Enteriobacteriaceae family. So all the organisms belonging to this class of bacteria are uh, uh, have the ability to, uh, to cause hydrolysis of macrolide by uh, aspherases enzyme. Or thirdly, there could be modification of ribosomal binding sites. So as we know, there is a certain binding site to where erythromycin has to bind to perform its activity. But if that uh, binding site is being protected um, through some chromosomal mutation or some enzyme called as methylase, which actually add methyl group to the binding site, all of these things can cause ribosomal protection, which ultimately will not allow the erythromycin to bind to that binding site. And now when there is no more binding of erythromycin to that site, there will be no more functioning or performance by erythromycin. And now these methylase enzymes are actually of two types. They could be uh, macrolide inducible methylase or they could be constitutive uh, methylase. So both of these methylase are actually adding methyl group to, um, to the binding site, but they um, could be induced by uh, macrolide itself or they are actually present um, constitutively in the cell. So, the more important uh, resistant mechanism in the gram-positive organisms are flux or methylase production. So if we talk about the cross-resistant, cross-resistant is actually a resistance which is developed by a certain um, drug, but it also causes resistance against other uh, drugs as well. For example, if a drug is this is, if an organism is resistant against erythromycin, it is also going to be resistant against other macrolides. So cross resistance is complete between them. So constitutive methylase production also confer resistance to structurally unrelated but mechanistically similar compounds such as colindamycin and streptogramin B. So if 
uh, some drugs are having similar mechanism of action or having similar binding site, those uh, drugs can be affected by constitutive methylase. For example, um, clindamycin and streptogramin B and macrolide, all of these drugs actually bind to the similar binding site. So all of these are going to be affected by constitutive methylases. So all of they are structurally unrelated. And this resistance is called as macrolide lincosamide streptogramin uh, resistance or MLS type B resistance, which share the same ribosomal binding site, as I have told you already. So because non-macrolide are poor inducer of the methylase, strain expressing an inducible methylase will appear susceptible in vitro. If a drug is uh, non-macrolide, it is not going to have much uh, effect on the production of methylase. So it is poor inducer of methylase. And strains expressing an inducible methylase will appear susceptible in vitro because it is not going, and those strains are not going to be resistant against uh, non macrolides. However, constitutive mutants that are resistant can be selected out and emerge during therapy with clindamycin. However, if a, uh, if a strain is having constitutive methylate, it is going to be resistant against, against both uh, macrolide and non macrolide drugs. But if a drug is um, having some inducible methylase, it is going to be only uh, resistant against um, macrolide drugs, not the non-macrolide drugs, because those are actually poor inducer of methylase. So this is how uh, resistance against macrolides or um, erythromycin uh, actually occurs. So this was all about it. Please support us on Patreon. And thank you for watching.